Shalom, my brothers and sisters. Good morning and good evening to you all around the world. You know, it's the fear of the Lord that is the beginning of wisdom, right? The fear and reverence of God is what brings us wisdom unto ourselves. And in doing so, when we honor and reverence God, God will in turn begin to bless us greatly. Amen. He will make us mighty upon the earth if we just follow after His word, after His command. Psalm 112. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in His commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Now there is something with a promise right there. It says, a man that fears God, fears the Lord, reverence him, your seed, your children, your children shall be blessed. Amen? Praise God. That's a, that's a good word right there. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his upright, his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. Amen. Again, when you are upright in God's word, when you are standing strong in him and not wavering, you are the light in the darkness. And that's what we're called to be, the light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. See, always a good man. He knows how to handle his money wisely, but he always freely gives to those who are in need. That's what we should be doing, not just in our finances, but giving ourselves to help others who need it most, right? We need to be good stewards in that. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Now remember that. The righteous in everlasting remembrance. What does that mean? It means we're in the Lamb's book of life when we are righteous. In the holy city in heaven, in Jerusalem, we are in the Lamb's book of life. Those that shall not be moved in unwavering in our commitment to God and declaring His word. We are in everlasting remembrance. Remembrance, it says. We are in remembrance. He remembers us. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed in trusting the Lord. Amen. Focused. Don't waver when you see the storm around you to the left and to the right. You may be scared, but don't be scared. God said, fear not, for I am with you. So put your focus ahead on him. Don't be like Peter and you'll start, stink, start sinking into the water. Rather, focus on Christ who's ahead and you won't sink and your heart is fixed and trusted in the Lord and you will be blessed greatly. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. And what does that mean? This is a prophetic psalm in many, in many cases. It's the description of hell. The wicked shall see the those who are in God, prospering and, and in peace, right? But when the wicked shall see it, they shall be grieved. They shall gnash with their teeth and melt away into the flames of hell. The desire of the wicked shall perish forever. There really will be no more wickedness, literally. There's always grief and misery in hell.
but the desires of being wicked are long gone when people are cast into the lake of fire. God wants us to be steadfast and focus on Him. He doesn't want us to waver to the left or the right. Straight and narrow is the path. Amen? So in this, remember, you are blessed when you fear God and when you delight greatly in what He says. Don't just be like, I got to do what He says. Be joyful in doing what He says. That's how we should be as Christians, as believers, being joyful in all things. Again, in all things, I say rejoice. Be joyful in doing the command and work of the Lord. It says your seed shall be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. When you are upright in God, your children who see you and follow after your example will take up that mantle that you have as well and follow after the same. Following after Christ, not wavering, not going to the right or the left, but staying straight ahead, not being afraid of evil tidings because your heart is fixed upon God. Nothing, don't let it shake your foundation. Don't let it. Don't let anything shake your foundation in God. Why does it say resist the devil? Why does it say keep resisting? Even though he will come at you time and time again, keep resisting the devil. He will flee from you. And each time, draw closer to God. Let the people around you, your children, whoever it may be, see the example that you set when they see the example you set, they shall be blessed because they have a teacher, they have a father, they have a mother who follows after God and they say, I want to grow up and be just like my father, just like my mother. They live and watch your example. Be a good father, be a good mother. If you want your children to be blessed upon the earth, Delight greatly in the law of the Lord. Follow after what he says. Yes, we are saved by the grace of Christ. But you cannot be a so-called Christian if you don't follow after what Christ says. Follow after God. Run to God. It says, draw yourself closer to God, right? <laughs> draw to him. How do you draw after God? How do you come close to God? You mimic what He says. You mimic what He does. That's how we are to be. You know how children mimic their father and mimic their mother. It's the same. We should mimic God. What did Jesus do, right? They say, they have these bracelets and all sorts of little trinkets that says, what would Jesus do, right? What would Jesus do? It says what, what Jesus do, right? But we, do we do what Jesus did? That is the question. Do what Jesus did. Not just read what Jesus did. He says he wants doers in the world. We are shaped by his word, right? Let his actions and his life shape you. The Bible is alive today alive. Its word is living. And if you read the living word of God and apply it, you shall be blessed. You shall not be afraid of the evil that tries to come that circles all around you. Why would you be afraid once you read the word of God and know what it says? Fear not. Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Because once the wicked sees who God is within you, it says they shall be grieved and melt away. That's why it's important to let your light shine for God. Let your light shine for Jesus. Pray for them that try to use you and hurt you, right? In the end, they will gnash their teeth and perish away because 
they saw God in you and yet they did not want to mimic or follow after it. The desire of the wicked shall perish, as it says. But let's pray that they follow it here while they are living and not on the day of judgment. God bless you, my brothers and sisters.